hey, Curtis, I'm not farming yet, but I'm educating myself about market gardening with yours and Jean-Martin Fortier's book, plus the five books you recommend in one of your videos. Oh, right on. I watch plenty of YouTube videos and other farmers um, and see many things that I would like to do when I start farming. I'm thinking about having a chicken tractor, making my own compost, growing dwarf fruit trees, veggies and flowers, digging a small pond, harvesting rainwater, plus hiring some help if necessary. If I have a lot of other, other ideas swimming around in my head, as I have a lot of ideas swimming around in my head as well, and I have a hard time not going down the rabbit hole and getting carried away with my ideas. I hear you, man. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one that gets carried away with their plans. Tell me how to keep my thoughts and wishes down to a manageable size and avoid the temptation to get caught up thinking uh, I can be Joel Salatin or Richard Perkins on half an acre city lot. Thank goodness uh, cattle are not available in a two foot uh, tall miniature size or else my head would be out in left field. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, well, I mean, you know, you got a half an acre. And so by the time, I don't know how that land is shaped. You know, that's another thing, guys. Like, feel free to add a satellite photo, um, add a drone shot if you've got a drone. You know, you can add all kinds of stuff that would make me see what you're doing better. But, um, I mean, you got, a, you got a half an acre, so it's not a lot. It depends, you know, so first of all, your goals really matter here. How much money do you want to make on your farm? Um, is it, all, is it all about money or is it not? Is it, you know, what are your values? You know, what do you want to accomplish? A lot of that would give me a better, um, framework on how to answer your question and give you some value. Um, but I would say on a scale of you want this farm to be really about making a, a profit to it's totally like a values based farm. I would say, uh, if you're, so I could just discuss a couple scenarios. If your farm is really about making a profit over here, then I would say, don't bother with any of that other stuff. Um, don't bother with any of it. Just, just grow intensive vegetables and make lots of money. Um, you know, grow high value intensive vegetables that I've demonstrated as, as I have demonstrated for many years on my channel and stick with that. Um, on the other end, if it's a values based, like say it's just all values based, then you could craft yourself a really nice homestead and do all those things and have a very enjoyable, uh, balanced, uh, lifestyle on a farm. And that's, that's more my context right now. That's what I'm looking to do. Uh, except I'm looking at doing it on it's like 300 acres. Um, so if you want to be in, somewhere in between, I would say don't get too carried away with animal stuff. Chickens, you can integrate chickens in on a, a fairly small scale and, and have a good amount of vegetable production and, and, and make a decent living that and have, have a nice balance with things and, and then the chickens might provide some fertility for you. So there's some value there. Um, but I would say, you know, really, really think about what your values are. What, what do you want to get out of this first and then go from there? Um, you know, I've demonstrated so many times now and I, and my book is still relevant in this, in this regard. Uh, even though my farming practices have changed a lot over the years, ever since I wrote that book six years ago. But um, man, is it even more than that? Was it 2013 that I was writing that, I think? Started to? Uh, anyways, um, I really laid out in that, in that book how you can go and calculate how much production you want. So yes, Money is a thing that uh, it's a, the unfortunate reality that we're motivated in that way to, to make profit, but that's just how it is. And so decide how much money you want to make and then count backwards. So figure out what that looks like with bed units and then go and figure out how many beds is that? What kind of, what kind of production do I need to do? Or what kind of rotations do I need to have in those beds to obtain that number? Um, that's all fairly simple. Um, but I think, you know, you, you might have a lot more of, what your context or what your dream is in your mind, but I'm not getting it here. 
So I'm happy to delve into that more. Tell me what your context is. Tell me what you want to achieve. What's your dream farm? Um, add pictures. Give me, give me, um, you know, even without seeing the land too, like some things like you saying you want to grow dwarf fruit trees and you want to have, you want to make your own compost and stuff like that. Uh, you want to harvest rainwater. It's like, well, where, where are you? You know, you're zone 6B. Oh, you're in Virginia. Okay, so you're West Virginia. Um, I don't know what the annual rainfall is like there, but I think it's a lot more than many other places. You might not need to harvest rainwater. Uh, it might be, you know, if water's cheap, it might be a waste of time. Um, but again, so much of that comes down to your, your context. Um, but again, I, I'm happy to, you know, there's some food for thought there and then, and then, then ask me, ask me again next week and then embellish your context more. And I'm happy to, um, to, to do the same. And then, uh, even add a, a satellite photo. Like you don't have to share your address publicly, but, um, you could just take a, a, a screenshot of a satellite photo of Google earth or something like that. You could even get into show, show me some of the, the design, you know, Google earth, you can actually even do it on Google maps. If you hold the shift key and move the arrow, you can change the aspect. And so you can actually see the slope of the land. Very, very useful. It's amazing how much you can learn from a property just by um, Google Earth. And um, I kind of wish there was a way I could do this without sharing the properties that I want to buy. I don't want, <laughs> when I'm, when I'm when I'm looking to buy real estate, I don't want to be publicly sharing the land that I'm looking at. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do the process. Uh, and then if, and when I do buy it, I could share a bunch of things that I didn't buy. Um, but I, but you know, you, you can learn so much, you know, like I go on Google earth, I look at a real estate listing and then I go on Google earth and, um, I type in that, that address and then I find the place. I immediately start moving the camera aspect around to see the, to see the slopes, where, where is it facing, you know, where are there depressions? What's the elevation? Is it, is it low line? Is it high elevation? There's so much you can learn. Uh, you know, what do the roads look like? What are the access? If you're buying rural, which is what I'm doing, you know, what's the road access look like? You can look at those roads. You can look at the condition of it. Like there's a lot you can learn uh, just from not even leaving your home. It's so amazing today what you can do. So um, if you've bought your land, it sounds like you have, um, you know, you're going to know all those things. But all those things factor into whether what you're going to do is going to work or not economically for you or not. 